reality you desire is already there. You don't have to manage it. You've already asked for it. You already created it. It's going to take yourself out of that position where you're blocking the doorway by your insistence. And worry is the result of insistence that you have to do. That you have to know it and figure it out, that you have to mentally plan. But instead we can feel our way into greater spaciousness, feel our way into greater empowerment, sense our way into that deeper I am. And by not creating our own reality, or by not attempting to control the creation of our own reality, we allow for the creation of our preferred, desired, aligned reality. And in this way, we enjoy the creation process, and we enjoy the created when it appears. But if we're only fixated on trying to enjoy the created once we have created it, then A, we're blocking the stream, and B, we're not enjoying the creation process while it's in process. So just step out of the way of your own soul, your own supreme intelligence. Let go. Don't, don't map it out, don't plan it out. Don't worry about details, how and when and who. That's far beyond your comprehension and it's not in your job description. Enjoy, enjoy being. Enjoy the faith that exists in simple being. You don't even have to cultivate faith or trust. It's already there. As soon as you connect back to the I am. That space that's not encumbered by the virtual reality of your senses. Just moment by moment, tap back into the presence. Just guide your attention to that which is already witnessing your life from the space beyond your life. And develop a fragrance, recognition, ability for this, where you recognize a certain fragrance. Oh, that's Chanel, isn't it? I recognize that. That's Hugo Boss for sure. I recognize that fragrance. I could tell it apart from a thousand other scents. But can you tell the flavor, the feel of your true self? Develop a sense for it so that you can identify it and hone in on it more frequently, more easily throughout the day. Otherwise, you'll be overwhelmed with the other senses. But your sixth sense is the sense of self, of being. So instead of always being focused through the eyes and the ears and the skin, the tongue, and so forth, the mind. In a sense, you could say the mind is the sixth sense, and the seventh would be the sense of being. So, can you ignore all six senses and identify, triangulate, recognize that deeper, subtler seventh sense? which is always present. It's a scent that permeates all other senses. 
just have to recognize it. You got to be quiet and present enough and disinterested from your own thought stream and beliefs. And then it's easy. But if you really insist and believe upon what you believe and what you think, you can fear the stoppage of that, fear the interruption of that, because you think you're in control. And if you let go for just a moment, then you can no longer create your own reality. You're in a flawed assumption. Remind yourself, how do I create my preferred reality? I don't. And that's how I do. Then that allows your mind to quiet down for you to ignore the otherwise so convincing seeming sixth sense of the mind connected to the other five senses of the physical reality. And it allows you to identify that subtler underlying ever present already free formless descriptionless knowing that right now I is and you start calibrating to that you start resonating with it and as it you become I am you become absorbed with that movie the foundation of the movie itself and you let everything else just kind of come and go come and go as it pleases you let your world be upgraded and altered without being distracted Right in front of your eyes, it may happen, but you don't have to be distracted from self. Just like when you're driving your car in the rain, the windshield wipers are going left and right in front of your face the whole time. But you're not distracted by the windshield wipers. You're more highlighting the road and the driving experience. That's what you're more present to. Similarly, don't be so present to what's happening within the world of the senses. You can only do that when you really recognize and identify that seventh underlying sense of being. Keep the door open, the door between source and what you consider your life reality. Keep that portal open, keep that air blowing through from source into your life, from source into your life. Don't stand in the doorway. Don't insist, don't plan it all out. Don't manage it. And that's how you create your own reality, your preferred own reality. In fact, that is synonymous. To create your own reality means to create your preferred reality because if it's not your preferred reality, it's not your own reality. It's someone else's reality. Now, yes, you have insisted upon that. So it is your responsibility you have created your not own reality. But it is not your own reality. That's why it feels off when it does. You've let that happen. Ignorantly so. It's not what you meant to do. But you did let that happen. No one else is in control in charge of your reality. You've assumed, you've adopted You've believed, you've insisted, you've stood in the doorway of your own reality wanting to manifest. And your own reality is always fluid, it's always in flux, it's always evolving and upgrading. So even if you manage to create it once, today, and you step into that frequency, that view, that perspective, that vantage point of your true self's view on what is your own reality, and you feel good, you feel aligned, you feel at peace, you feel in joy, doesn't mean that you should now step back into the doorway and block all circuitry, block all flow, because what's next is your own reality. And what has been is no longer your own reality. So consistently, we have to move out of our own way. Give up the insistent mind, the sixth sense which always contemplates whatever is perceived through the five initial senses. It's always interpreting it. It's always giving it meaning. It's always trying to plan and manage all the data that's coming through the first five senses. The sixth sense of the mind, the personality mind, is attempting to make sense and control 
the other data. So if you can get out of the way, even of that sixth sense and step into the seventh sense, then all the chakras will open up. There will be a flow that harmonizes, rebalances, puts you back into the right quantum reality. And then you don't have to work very hard to get from A to B. It will happen. Sometimes instantaneously, you will feel the shift. And we call it magic. We call it grace. We call it, finally, I'm worthy. God has heard my prayer. And that's okay to feel that way, because it's true. What's not true is that that's not always happened. It's just that we insist. So it cannot refresh itself. Our refresh rate is very low. So what used to be our own reality no longer is our own reality, but we're still identified with it as if it is. Then we feel off, we feel misaligned, we feel sidetracked. And we begin to feel unworthy and unheard and unmet and unseen and resentful until we realize that we have been stopping the refresh rate. And then it's easy. Forgiveness is easy because we realize we were holding everyone responsible for our own ignorance, our own insistence, our own strong desire to get back into alignment just not knowing how, trying to do it through the video game, through the groping and the grasping, and the managing and the controlling and the planning and the insisting and the believing and the thinking. And then it's not working. Of course it's not working because that's not how we create our own reality. We create our own reality by not creating our own reality. That's how we create our own reality. It's how we shift back into our own reality, the reality that is truly our own, germane to us, natural to us, authentic to who we are in that moment, which always evolves. And then everyone else is off the hook. No one holds anything against you and you don't hold anything against anyone. Because how could they ever affect your source's creation of your own reality? So true courage then is to step up against your own mind not against others so much. To get out of your own way, not to have others get out of your way. Trust that source's power is far greater than your mind's. That seventh sense is universal and cosmic. That sixth sense is personal and individuated. It only has access to the collection of everything you've experienced in this life. The seventh sense is beyond this life. So it can draw upon all your soul experiences of millions of years of evolution and knowledge and wisdom. You don't have that power as an individuated mind. You don't have that clarity. You don't have that wisdom. So we step out of our own ways. We stop thinking. Say, fuck you, mind. Stop saying, fuck you, this person. And fuck you, that person. And fuck you, government. No, say, fuck you. Insert your own name here. Fuck you, Bentinho. No, not them. No, not this. No, not that. Fuck you. No, 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 no. Shut it. Shut your mouth. Yeah, but, but, but. Shut up. I have no interest in what you have to say because I know where it leads. I love you. You're innocent. But shh, shh, shh. Uh, uh, uh. Shh, 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 shh. That's true courage. That's honor. Standing up for yourself against yourself. Now that's true strength. That's true faith. And that's how you allow your cre creation to be reshaped in the image of your true self. Then it becomes your own reality again instead of some other reality that you've fabricated, that you've adopted from your senses. In the conventional sense, there is nothing you can control except your own mind. So you need to shush it. You need to calm yourself the fuck down. It's all you can do. Calm yourself the fuck down. Stop it. And if you stop it long enough with enough self courage to stand up against yourself for yourself, 
to give yourself enough love and worthiness to say enough. I'm not going on this tangent that you're trying to get me to play into, believe into. The movie seems interesting and fascinating, and I know I've got a lot of invested in this movie, and I've already watched it for so many years. I can't just step out of the movie now. I paid for this movie with my life, with my incarnation. So I have to watch it. I have to be absorbent. You just have to, true courage. You have to stand up against yourself, your own addiction to the storyline, your own insistence on your plans and your reality. Shush it, shush it, shush it, shush it. Come into the quietude, the presence of now, and begin to identify the seventh sense, this underlying ever present awareness of awareness. And you keep connecting to that, keep plugging into that, moment to moment, little reminder at a time. Ah, yes. And then the mind goes off and you go, you've had enough airtime, you asshole. And you relax. You let source do the talking. You tune your radio. And the mind tries to take over again. That's fine. But you're going to stand up against yourself for yourself. Just initially, don't worry. The mind will stream back into alignment. It will become your servant once again. But initially, when you're in a difficult place between a rock and a hard place, you got to find your own escape route out of the matrix. And the only way to do that is by standing up against yourself. For yourself is the only way out. It's the only way back into bliss and joy and grace and connection and wisdom and clarity and liberation. So you got to find the courage to shush yourself. To not be interested in what's next. And then before you know it, that Teletubby-like smile of the Son of God rises. And you feel like Teletubby. You literally feel like a dancing Teletubby. And you feel a little bit crazy, maybe, even. for a moment, just a little bit manic, a little bit too childish. Like, this can't be. I should hammer this back down into the ground. But for a moment, just let yourself experience that Teletubby-like, logical-less, illogical joy. It's just the Son of God, the grace of God shining back through your system. That is the reward. That's the immediate reward of you standing up against yourself, you being able to shush yourself. That's true honor and integrity. If you cannot do that, you don't really have access to what true integrity, true strength, true balance, true service to others feels and looks like. You're an ideologist until the point where you can access this consistently. Conquer yourself lovingly, but firmly. Because your mind is like a recalcitrant child. Sometimes it needs to be shushed. Enough, you little monster. Go to bed. This willpower will be rewarded almost instantaneously. You will feel it. You will switch from that serious, concerned person to a teletype, energetic. You will notice the shift, identify the fragrance of your Teletubby cell. <laughs> I hope I haven't ruined your true self for you. You can give it some other image, of course. But you get the point. It's illogical. It's a state of grace and wisdom. Makes so much sense, but it is illogical. 